If you feel like your shopping habits are a little bit on the unhealthy side, I completely understand and you are not alone. Today, I'm giving you a handful of things to do, a handful of things to keep in mind the next time you're shopping so that you can move forward as a more mindful consumer. If you wanna see more content on how to shop responsibly and reduce your consumption, make sure you hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do to help tame your shopping habits, to help kind of get it all under control, is to reduce your social media consumption. We're really starting off strong here because I think this is one of the most important things to do. And honestly, one of the best things that really helped me with my overconsumption. It is so easy to get caught up in the social media consumption cycle. It is very real. It's been reported that 41% of Gen Z and millennials are making impulse purchases every two to three weeks. So if that doesn't speak for itself, I don't know what will. Out of sight, out of mind. Depending on your relationship with social media, this might be a little bit hard to hear, but remember that if you wanna be a more responsible shopper, if you wanna stop wasting money on clothes you never wear, if you just wanna be better with your shopping habits, you're gonna have to make changes to your everyday life. I deleted my Instagram about two and a half, three years ago, and let me tell you, it has done wonders for me across so many different areas of my life, but especially when it comes to over shopping and overspending. And trust me, I have not looked back. Like I'm not getting on Instagram or TikTok or anything like that anytime soon. I'm only here on YouTube, that's it. Now I'm not suggesting that you go and delete all of your social media accounts by any means, but instead I recommend that you do a social media audit. Take a look at who you're following, who's popping up the most in your feed, and really think about how is this person or this page or this brand or whatever affecting my shopping decisions. If you find there are a handful of brands or influencers or even celebrities out there that are constantly pushing products and kind of triggering a need for certain items for you, it might be a good idea to either unfollow them or mute them. My next piece of advice is to avoid shopping as a form of entertainment. I know that this can be a really tricky habit to break, especially if you're somebody who's very used to shopping as a form of entertainment and because it gives you that quick dopamine hit. But if you are shopping out of boredom, then it is time to shift that narrative. Shopping should never be something that you're doing to fill your time or because you're bored. So instead, I encourage you to fill that desire to go online and shop or desire to go to the store and shop when you know you really don't need anything with something that's a little bit more productive or maybe just more fulfilling. Something that's gonna give you a little bit more of a long-term satisfaction. So ask yourself, what are some things that you do in your current life that are really rewarding outside of shopping? So for me, it's reading. I love to read, I do it as often as I can. And whenever I feel bored, which is not very often because I'm quite busy, but whenever I do have that boredom urge to just go online and shop and kind of use it as like a stress reliever almost, I put that aside and I pick up a book. It's just way more fulfilling. So you can pick up a book, you can journal, you can clean your room, you can clean your home, you can call a friend, like I don't know your life, but I'm sure there's things that you do on the daily basis that you really enjoy or maybe things that you know you should do but you've been putting off. So I recommend replacing that need to go shopping with uh, the desire of something else. These are things that are gonna allow you to keep your mind and body engaged without actually needing to add new stuff to your life all the time. Also remember that shopping out of boredom also leads to impulse shopping, which leads to you having a bunch of items in your closet that you're either not wearing or you don't know why you bought it or it's leading to some regret or some guilt. So by choosing to do something else with your time, you're reducing clutter in your home, you're of course saving money, and you are reducing that need to impulse buy. So the goal here is really about being more intentional with how you spend your time, which then is going to help you be more intentional with how you spend your money. My third tip is to shop your closet. I talk about this a bunch on my channel because I just love it so much. It's a really great way to get creative and get expressive with the items that you already own, especially the items that we are often overlooking. They're sitting in the back of the closet. We never reach towards them. 
So why not give them the chance to shine on their own by experimenting with the clothes that you have? So take some time to create some new outfits. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Take a few minutes, you know, every few weeks or every few days, depending on your life and your schedule and just play around with items that you already own, especially paying attention to pieces that you might have been neglecting over the past few months or years. Shopping your closet has so many positive effects to it, but I think the biggest thing that I personally love about it is when you take time to play with your clothes, to get to know your wardrobe a little bit more, you're going to build a more confident, and stronger relationship with the clothes in your closet, with your wardrobe. And by having that confidence, you're no longer going to second guess what you already own. You're no longer going to want to fill a bunch of non-existent gaps that are in there. And you'll just feel more satisfied with the pieces that are already in your space. The more confident you are in your existing clothes, the more confident you are in the versatility of them and in their potential, the less you're gonna feel the urge to go buy something just for the sake of it. So at the end of the day, it's not just about shopping intentionally, but it's also about styling intentionally, rather than trying to fill a gap in your closet that just doesn't exist. The next piece of advice I have for you is that it's okay to admire something without actually buying it. I feel like it's so easy to want to own every single little thing that is catching your eye. But the truth of the matter is that just because you like something doesn't mean that you actually have to own the thing. Learning how to appreciate or admire things from a distance and just let them be is one of the biggest forms of self-control. And it was one of the most important things when I was learning to slow down my own consumption. This is about shifting your mindset from, oh my God, I want that so bad, oh my God, I need that, to, wow, that's a really cute, beautiful item, that person looks great in it, but it's just not something that I need right now. When you start to appreciate things for what they are without actually feeling the need to own them, you'll realize that your happiness does not need to come from a place of constantly acquiring new items. It comes from making thoughtful and deliberate decisions while also enjoying the items that you already have. So the next time you see something online, in person, whatever the case may be that catches your attention and it kind of starts to light that fire inside of you, take time to appreciate it, admire its beauty or whatever it does for you, but just know that it's okay to appreciate it from afar as well. I did an anti-haul video recently and a lot of the items in that video I really, really liked, but a lot of the reasons why I didn't end up buying them or won't end up buying them is because I just know that they're not gonna serve my wardrobe in the long haul. So if you wanna see kind of the thought process behind a handful of examples, I'm gonna link the video above here and you can check that out. And my last tip is that if you wouldn't buy the item full price, it might be a good idea to reconsider it. Getting a great deal is always very exciting and I am by no means suggesting that you need to go out and buy every single thing full price, like at all. In fact, I can't remember the last time I paid full price for an item, like not really for me, but there is something that you need to know about getting those good deals. If the deal is the only thing that's driving you to purchase it, it might be a good idea to just pause and rethink the purchase. Oftentimes the way that we're viewing sales and deals and limited time offers is a direct correlation with our relationship to money. So for some of us, it's a scarcity mindset. It's like, oh my God, it's such a good deal. I'll just find a way to make it work so that I can have it. But if you need to convince yourself to make something work in your wardrobe, it might be a good idea to just take a step back and think about how. And that's why I think asking yourself the question, would I buy this if it was full price is a really telling response. Like if the answer is no, then maybe it's not for you. And you're likely just swayed by the deal of the item rather than the actual value of the item itself. So this is where being mindful of your purchases is really coming into play. Instead of getting caught up in the sale or the deal of the item, Think about how it's actually going to serve you. Is this something that you're gonna wear often? Does it go well with the other styles and tones that you have in your wardrobe? Is it going to last beyond one season? These are the things you wanna consider beyond just the price of the item. But if you're only buying it because it's cheap, if that's the thing that's really lighting up the whole idea of the purchase for you, 
it is definitely time to reconsider. All right, you guys, that is the end of the video. Leave a comment down below which tip you found to be the most helpful or leave any tip that you have below that helped you reduce your overconsumption. I would love to chat with you guys about it. As always, thank you so much for watching. I am so appreciative of your support and I will see you guys next time. Bye.